Hey everybody, this is Hercules Penix, founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Hercules Penix Academy of Comic Book Studies. Today we're going to be looking at Amazing Adventures number 29 and 31. These uh, feature Kill Raven, Warrior of the Worlds. So the title of the feature has been changed from War of the Worlds to Kill Raven because he's the star. He's the breakout star of the comic. Of course, the villains are still the Martians from War of the Worlds. Nothing's really changed except the title. They figure it's more sellable. Um, let's crack open the first one, number 29. Another beautiful P. Craig Russell cover. This has a special resonance for me. This was the first uh, only Kill Raven I owned as a little kid when I was first getting into comic books. And I just remembered looking at this so much being like, this looks different than all my other comics. This looks different than uh, the Shogun Warriors or something. And uh, so it really uh, hits. I've looked at this cover a lot in my life. And it's a damn good cover. This is from 1974. The Hell Destroyers. Written by Don McGregor. And pencils and inks and colors by Craig Russell. Uh, so this is a nice looking comic. P. Craig Russell, uh, like I've said before, a, a great colorist, even though he was a, an artist, but he was better than most colorists. He would usually color his own work. He never, I don't think he ever colored anyone else's stuff in Marvel. So we start off where we left off last issue, where uh, Kill Raven and crew have just freed Eve, 3031, I believe is her number. They've just freed her from the sacrificer, who is going to kill her baby as soon as it was born and serve it up to the Martian overlords as dinner. And also Adelon is there. The other, he's the other big baddie. So they're still, they're in Chicago still at death birth, the Citadel. So they run away and uh, just look how beautiful this stuff is. Every panel is pretty amazing in this. Colors, too. So, uh, Kill Raven basically says, we're not just escaping here. We're going to take this place down. This horrible place. So, Adelon and the Sacrificer are... Uh, <laughs> these guys are just, like, constantly bickering with each other. And arguing with each other. As they're uh, heading out to get the Death Breeders. That's the troops of Adelon. He's going to, um, you know, muster them up and uh, go after Kill Raven and crew. But on the way, they see the the dining hall where Kill Raven and friends killed all the Martian overlords. And they're just speechless. They're shattered by the revelation. God, that design of the sacrificer is <laughs> just so gross. Really cool looking. Edelon still looks pretty silly. He looks like a, he's going to play a football game or something. So they go to the pens where all the Adam and Eves are held, uh, our Kill Raven, and he uses this uh, holographic megaphone. Usually Adelon would use that to break their spirit, but he's using it now and says, guys, we're going to free you all. Your day of freedom is at hand, of, uh, freedom is at hand. And before uh, they can finish their job, Volcana Ash all of a sudden just says, I'm, I'm out of here. And Kill Raven says, you can't go. And she's like, no, I can. <laughs> and she just melts a hole through the wall here. Meanwhile, Eve is getting pretty close to pregnancy. They got to get her someplace safe. So all the Adam and Eve's are freed. The walls just dissolve. And they all march out of there. I don't know where they're going to go, but at least they're not in death birth. And Volcana Ash this is the reason why she left. She's She goes down to the crowd and is looking through the crowd, looking for her sister. And she sees her. She says, Melanie, it's me. And Melanie doesn't even recognize her. She doesn't even remember her name. So basically she's been mind wiped. 
then fucking Ash is crushed. And she's like, oh, I guess she's not my sister anymore, really. Look at that beautiful panel of her sorrow. That's really nice. I love this panel too. I mean, I love every panel. When I gotta stop saying that. So I like this like, little character bit of Volcano Ash. Kill Raven comes up and all of a sudden she hides her sadness and she starts flirting with him. So basically that's Volcana. She hides her pain behind her, you know, her, her banter, her sassiness. She can never open up to someone and tell them how she's really feeling. So Adelon and the Death Breeders are about to go get Kill Raven and friends, yeah, along with the Sacrificer. <laughs> what an ugly motherfucker. Uh, Kill Raven and friends are down like in the main fusion reactor of Death Birth. Some guards come out and attack them, but our heroes fight them off. And this poor guy tries to strangle Volcana, and she just incinerates him. Look at that. Once again, really nice colors. Look at God, that panel's amazing. That doesn't even look like P. Craig Russell there, the line work. I almost, I wonder if one of his pals helped him out. In the 70s, those guys would have deadline problems and your friends would just show up at midnight and they'd stay up all night helping each other out, draw stuff. So you never know. Could be Val Mayrick or something. Another Ohioan. So Kill Raven jams this ionic blade in the fusion reactor, and they got like a minute to get out of there. So they get in these sky sleds and take off. Look at that page, death birth exploding. More of the uh, typeset captions makes it look. Uh, I think Don McGregor thought it looked more sophisticated, more adult. Meanwhile, Michelle and uh, Carmela Frost, they've been uh, kind of taking care of Grok, the little uh, mutant guy. And obviously they're getting closer. We see this last panel here. She's about to tell him who Grok really is. Grok is my... And then Kill Raven walks in. And... Uh, they just start bantering, you know, the old friends and just nice character stuff. You often, you didn't see this in many comics back then. Just, you know, characters having a down moment, actually like joking around. They, they seem to have real personalities, these characters. Maybe not three dimensional, but at least two dimensional. So they're riding away from death birth. Did I say that wrong again? No, I, that's its death birth. And uh, Kill Raven's on his crazy demon horse, the Serpent Stallion. And then the Death Breeders show up. And they start firing at our, our heroes. They've got a bunch of sky slids. This is a pretty fun action here, just them all taking out the, the villains. This is a pretty fun action scene. Uh, Kill Raven is a. Uh, at the edge of this cliff, all these guys are chasing him here. And he just turns around and waits for the right moment. And he leaps onto the sky sled as it plummets off the cliff or flies off the cliff. And it beats the crap out of these two guys. And then leaps from the their sky sled onto uh, Mashullah's. Of course, Volcano, Volcano Ash is just taking him out. She's like a, she's like having a tank on your side, a flamethrower. And Adelon shows up and makes some villainous vow. I'll get you, Kill Raven. I'll get you, Duke boys. Another beautiful Peak Ray Russell cover. The day the monument shattered. So, uh, we're in Gary, Indiana now. This is almost like an, uh, a road picture. 
they're like uh, Don McGregor is obviously looking at a map and just like they're slowly making their way across America. Um, same creative team, except the colorist coloring is by Petra Goldberg, one of the great colorists of the 70s. And you're going to see some stuff in here that's freaking gorgeous. Like, I can't believe with the newsprint and the crappy printing, the ambitious stuff she at least attempts. Some of it looks really good on this, uh, you know, newsprint paper. It's interesting how nice it looks. Oh, man, I think the art's even getting better. This is so nice. So apparently they're at this, uh, an old McDonald's. The golden arches have been, uh, like, uh, semi-destroyed, half-destroyed. More of the typeset. It's uh, giving us a little history about how, yeah, before the Martians attacked in 2001, we were on our way to destroying ourselves. So, uh, yeah, I love this kind of, these panel layouts, all these panels on a page. This uh, robot thing shows up. Pretty scary looking. It's a death tracker. So I guess it's got little video cameras in its eyes. And it's obviously working for Atalon and the Sacrificer. They take it down. And here we see the Death Breeders with Adelon and the Sacrificer. Still arguing. Look at all this this word balloon here. Well, many word balloons. That's a very text-heavy page. Don McGregor could blather on. So they're looking through the Death Tracker's monitor and they see what happened. And they're like, oh, we're getting close though. We gotta get those fuckers. So we get to see a few character moments the uh, guys in the camp. This is really weird, this part. So, uh, yeah, there's the golden arches that are broken. And all these people show up, all wearing different garb from different eras. But they all have these little, like, circles on their cheeks. Almost like they're little clowns or something. And it appears that they're worshipping at the shrine, the golden arch. And, uh, Kill Raven and friends can't make heads or tails. They're just like, I don't know, what the hell are they doing? They start repeating six words over and over. To the devourer, grant us deliverance. This is what I was talking about, guys. Look at this beautiful sunset Petra Goldberg does with the limited colors that uh, were around then. That's really nice looking. So uh, this is an interlude with Scar. Remember the guy with the sphincter face? He's still trying to chase. Uh, he's still on the hunt for Kill Raven and friends. He's in a, one of those tripod Martian walkers. He sees this old sea captain dude. And he asks him if he knows where Kill Raven is. And the guy says, nah. And he... Uh, Totally burns his hands. And I think uh, Scar doesn't see this, but it says Kill Raven was here. I think he missed that. But it's just a little character piece. Just, they bring this character in to do a little, almost a soliloquy about how he wants to go out to sea again. And maybe somewhere in the ocean's depths, it'll tell me about life, and I don't have to fear death no more. More of that beautiful sky in the background. So Kill Raven and crew uh, go into this cave. Everyone's in the cave now. Doesn't look good for Grok. He's dying. And Michelle's with Carmilla. And look at this, guys. This was very important in 1974. This is the first interracial kiss in comic books. Um, I read somewhere that Don McGregor, like... The editor was really nervous, of course. And Don McGregor was like, oh, we'll totally like just paint it, um, color it, kind of like just a wash gray. So it won't really pop out. If you're just flipping through it, you wouldn't notice. But then he lied to the guy and 
<laughs> Patrick Goldberg just colored it normally. I, I don't know if they got how many angry letters they got, if they got any from the South or anything like that, but that's a really uh, important panel in the history of comic books. And after this, they're going to be totally uh, hooked up with Shola and Carmilla. So uh, Atalon and the Sacrifice are right outside. They've tracked him down. Inside, all of a sudden, this thing comes out of the the lake that's in the mountain. It's very, very like H.P. Lovecraft. Just repulsive, disgusting creature with all these various things. This is the Devourer. I was trying to see if there was anything interesting here. There's a letter from Peter B. Gillis, who would later go on to be a pro. Oh, I should explain, guys. So there's no, I'm not looking at number 30, because that was a reprint issue. You know, years ago I sold it. I'm like, eh, it's, it's not even part of the Don McGregor's thing. But I kind of regret it now, because apparently there was like three beautiful P. Greg Russell pinups in it of some of the characters. But, you know, actually how good P. Craig Russell's art is at this time, maybe I'll rebuy it just for three pages of pinup art. I can't get enough of his stuff back then. I love his stuff now, but this is like a totally different artist. So they uh, have to fight this devourer creature. And... Uh, Kill Raven shoots one of those, what is it, a stalactite? <coughs> and it lands right in the monster and kills him. But then the sacrificer pops up and starts attacking Kill Raven. They did mention that the reason why there was a reprint last issue was because of deadline issues. I imagine how much work Pico Argos was putting into this. Yeah, he might be late. I can see a little Russianness in some of these later pages. I think he was running out of time. And while they're fighting, uh, they're fighting right under the golden arches. And one of them breaks, uh, collapses right on top of the sacrificer and kills him. So there's three epilogues now. Epilogue one, Adelon is surrounded and Adam's all like, ooh, let me take care of this. It's an interesting character bit about Adelon. He's a total dandy. He's always worried about getting dirt on his pristine white uniform and stuff. I thought that was a weird little thing. And uh, Adam clocks him. But then uh, Volcana kills him. She fires a bolt of uh, heat into his back. That face there is just so... I don't know what that reminds me of. Almost like some 2000 AD artist or something. Very interesting cartooning from Pete Greg Russell. Epilogue 2. It really just continues the story. So, uh, I guess Volcano Ash says, I'm heading out, guys. I'm gonna, you know, find my sister again. And maybe help those poor Adam and Eve's on their, wherever they're going. And after all the flirting, Kill Ravens are like, come here, you. <laughs> Look at that great panel. Really beautiful uh, art there and coloring. So Adam and Eve and Volcana head off and they're gonna find the other Adam and Eve's, like I said. And epilogue three. And it looks like uh, maybe P. Craig Russell drew this before he ran out of time because this is beautiful stuff. Look at that. So uh, once again, Don McGarry is trying to make some commentary about fast food. And these people go and they get devoured by this monster. The 
they pass through the remaining portal. Because, you know, the Golden Arches, there's two of them for the McDonald's. The other one collapsed on the Sacrificer. And nearly genuflect, once this symbol must have attracted people from far and near, an awesome sign for some religious sect. Perhaps, who knew, they had found it. Oops, sorry. Perhaps, who knew they had found a haven upon reaching its golden archway. Oh, Don McGregor, you're so deep. But there you go. Two more issues in the ongoing saga of uh, Kill Raven by Don McGregor and P. Craig Russell. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you could see the art well. I hope you're watching this on a big screen because, man, these are sweet looking. And, uh, yeah, I'll probably be back in a few weeks with the next two. And thanks for watching. And hopefully I'll see you here next time at the Hercules Pedics Academy of Comic Book Studies.